Hey guys, John here. Today's pigments patch is called Corrosive Strings, and I was kind of going for a cello, but kind of stringy kind of things. Also creepy sounding, and yeah, I came up with this. It's pretty simplistic, but there's also some interesting techniques that I want to share with you that might help you making this type of patch. So here we go. Okay, so that was corrosive strings, so let's get into it here. So for the synth side, we're going to be using the first engine here for sample, the second two sample again, and the utility engine, we're just using one noise oscillator, both filters, and then for our effects, we're going to be using three modules here, and then uh, just an EQ for the third bank over here. So let's turn off our effects here. Let's go back to our synth page. Let's turn up utility one, engine number two, and look at the first one. So this first one is going to be suspended. So this one's interesting because we're gonna be using this suspended sample. If we click here, it's going to be under, where are you? Synth pads and then suspended almost nearly at the bottom. Now this one's gonna be going to filter number one. We're gonna talk about this just in a second because this is very cool how this works. So the start position is gonna be 0.236 and you can kind of move it to whatever you want. I found like this one seems pretty cool. We're gonna be using granular. The density is gonna be 105 Hertz. This middle knob is unchanged, so don't worry about that one. The size, however, is 395 milliseconds. And I don't remember if I changed any of these. I don't think I did. Yeah, I think these are all going to be default here, so you don't have to worry about that. But the important part here to really drive home is that this engine over here, this sample, is getting fed into this first filter, which is the comb filter. So we have all these different spikes here that kind of come up through this filter, and it really gives that interesting type of texture to it. So the gain is going to be at 0.954. So take a listen to how it sounds with this filter and then with it bypassed. And then bypassed. So right there, we can kind of almost tell that texture, that stringiness a little bit, but there's a lot of noise in the background here. Then with a the filter. So that's the big magic of comb filtering. You can really get a cool type of string sound by sending something like this through that type of filter. So this is gonna be on the feedback mode over here. And yeah. And the filter routing, in case uh, you didn't notice already, is going to be independent. So we have this knob all the way to the right. So filter one's going to the effects and filter number two is going to the effects. So this basically means we're not sending filter number one and fil filter number two. They're going to be independent filters from each other. Moving on from there, let's turn off this engine and now let's go to engine number two. And this one's cool because we're going to be using the Bode acoustic, which sounds like this. So we're kind of getting that low string cello kind of sound here. The start time is going to be at 0 0.700. We're going to be using granular again for this. And really the thought process for a lot of granular stuff is that this sample is only a certain length of time, right? We could hit a note and we can play it and it ends at a certain point. But if we have granular on and kind of just fiddle with the settings so it still sounds smooth, we can really hold this note forever. So that's the magic of granular in that sense. So the density is going to be 12.2 hertz. This knob is unchanged, and the, st and the size over here, I almost said start time, the size time is going to be 500 milliseconds. And keep in mind with granular synthesis and then a lot of effects and stuff, it is a little bit more CPU intensive, so always keep that in mind for how many you want to use here. So this limit over here, so kind of keep uh, an eye on that. Both of them are going to be at 128, so it should be okay for most uh, computers. Now, another interesting thing to note is this fine here is rapidly turning right here, if you didn't notice that, and that's modulated by LFO1 at 0 0.06. So we look at LFO1, and this is a rate about 11.2 hertz, and we have a little bit of fade at 2 to uh, 26 milliseconds, and it's re-triggered by the poly keyboard. So the thought process, if you've ever seen a cello 
a cellist, a cello player, play a cello, you'll notice how their left hand just moves back and forth really kind of funny. It's hard not to laugh at that sometimes for me personally, but if you ever see that, you'll see their hand just wiggling really back and forth, really trying to get that, uh, that vibrato kind of going. So uh, that's kind of basically simulating that effect here as best <laughs> as we can do here. And then this engine is going to filter number two, which is a multi-mode, which is kind of just cutting a lot of that top end off at 13, uh, 13,440 hertz, low pass 24. Because too high. And that's even cutting some stuff off. So feel free to cut a little bit more if you feel that's a little bit too annoying. Because this patch will cut through the mix, that's for sure. Now turning this one off, let's go to the utility engine. So this one, we're just using the mid drive, which sounds just like that. Which is really nothing special, but it's just, it's more texture, it's more noise, it's more sound that we can send to this whole patch to kind of fill it up a little bit more. And this one's going to multi-mode filter number two. All right, so that's basically the engines and the uh, filters. Let's take a look at the effects here, because this is just dry like this. Which still sounds pretty cool, right? The, also, the envelope is actually very important. We should talk about that. So the attack is 1.14 seconds. The decay, 1.19 seconds. Sustained, 0.636, because you can't really necessarily sustain that long of a stringed instrument for that long. Unless you're like Superman or something like that, you might want to bring down that sustain a little bit. The release is 1.32 seconds, and then the attack curve is negative 0.800, and then the decay curve is negative 4. All right, so let's talk about our effects here. So the first one is gonna be a multi-band, and this one's kind of really just a taste here. So let's take a look at this right over here. And there we go. So this is kind of, like I said, to taste, it's kind of that character. You really kind of just want to play with the sound as far as like bringing up the highs, bringing up the lows, or bringing them down, just to really carve out how you want it to sound here. Then it's going to hit a delay over here at a time of 1 over 8, the fine 0, feedback 2, 0.272, stereo width 0.7, high frequency 20, and then the low pass 20,000, so I didn't really change these here. It's going to be on ping pong, and this dry wet over here is 0, but it's modulated by macro number 1, which is delay. Next up, it hits a reverb over here. The pre-delay, 20 milliseconds, size one, decay 0 0.460, stereo width 0 0.5, high pass frequency 200, low pass 15K, and damping 0 0.6. And again, this one is also on a macro, number two, which says reverb, and at about 0.46, so 46%. Last but not least, we just have a little bit of a corrective EQ. This first one here is bringing this down by like half a deep or something like that at about 112 hertz. And then I think number three it is, we're bringing this up by 2.26 at about 2.3K. And that's kind of really just to get that presence of that string and then bring down just a little bit of that low end. It's a very minuscule EQ here. But if it pokes a little bit through, you might want to pull down this third band a little bit or maybe mess with the multi-band or just use an external EQ if it's poking out a little bit too much. So with that being said, this is that patch again. Yeah, and like I said, the macros are going to be delay and reverb, so if you don't like these delays, you can just bring those down and then use external stuff, totally up to you. But if you like this patch and you can get it for free in the video description below, just click that link and it can be yours. So thank you for watching, hope you learned something, and we'll see you in the next one.